church. Lovely day outside, providing the wind keeps up. <laughs> Our service begins on page 119 in the Green Prayer Book. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God's kingdom, now and in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. And also with you. Blessed are you when people hate you on account of the, of the Son of Man. Rejoice and leap for joy, for behold, your reward is great in heaven. Prayer of preparation on the bottom of the page there. Chapter 6, beginning at the 17th verse. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. He came down with them and stood on a level place, with a great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all of Judea, Jerusalem and the coast of Tyre and Sidon. They had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases, and those who were troubled with unclean spirits were killed. And all in the crowd were trying to touch him, for power came out from him and healed all of them. Then he looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you and when they exclude you, revile you and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice on that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven, for that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. For the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. sit down. Doing something a little bit different this morning. Uh, let me tell you about uh, a really exciting venture that we have in our parish. Uh, we've been talking for some time and we've attempted a couple of times or once before to establish a church plant. In other words, a mission church uh, out in the Estella Baruma area. Uh, now, what we've been planning is uh, this, this time around, we've been looking at how we can 
think about how we can bring a number, number of partnerships together. And so we've been negotiating with the University of Charles Sturt University and um, working in partnership with them. We're talking about moving our preschool on the floodplain down in North Wagga up onto higher ground so we don't have to worry about floods. And uh, the university uh, are very keen to partner with us in moving the preschool up to a higher greenfield site. Now that greenfield site will be um, a really, uh, the, the university have allocated one hectare of land for us, which is crown land, and it's not gonna cost us anything much, probably $500 a year um, is, is the crown land uh, going rate. And uh, what we will be doing is we'll be working on uh, with the university educating early childhood teachers as well as running a preschool, which we are going to triple the size of that preschool. Um, we will be gaining um, um, money for that from this, uh, hopefully from grants from the, from, the, from the government to do that, to build the preschool. So we're, it's a very exciting venture. In that preschool, we're going to have a uh, multi-purpose centre, which will be there for training during the week of, of early childhood teachers and uh, for meetings and other things. And we'll be also using that on Sunday as church. And so there'll be a multi-purpose centre there as well. The land is located diagonally. If you look at uh, Farrow Road, where track school is, it's, it's located probably diagonally across the road uh, going towards the roundabout near the university. Uh, for people who know that area, obviously you all do. But, uh, but so it's, it's a really exciting venture, I think. And um, uh, part of the jigsaw puzzle of starting that up is to, um, is to have people who will be working and dedicated to that mission. And we have two people here today, and I've introduced them before, which is Jeff and Rosemary Holt, who have come from Sydney. And uh, I'd like them to come up to up here now, and they're going to be part of uh, and, and helping to lead the lay mission uh, out there uh, with us, of course. Welcome, friends. Come over here to the to the microphone. I'll put mine on so you can talk into this one. It might be helpful. Come over to the microphone. Stand over here. Uh, I, I've, got, I've got a one on, so I'm right, so you can speak into this one. Um, Jeff, uh, Jeff and Rosemary uh, come from Sydney, they've got a property down on the Southern Highlands, and, um, and uh, Jeff's uh, run a fairly significant IT company, we would say. Yeah. Is, that, is that close to the mark? It's an advertising agency. Yes, all right, advertising agency for some time. And so uh, Jeff's been in advertising, and Rosemary um, um, has been a CMS missionary for some time. Before uh, for four, how many years? Four years as a CMS missionary. And so Rosemary's um, been involved in mission as well. Uh, you might like to tell us a little bit about yourself now, Jeff, if you can. Morning. Morning. Nineteen fifty-eight. There was a. Fellowship House Party for St. Clement's Mossman, and I was in part of that fellowship and became a Christian at that Fellowship House Party. From there on, it's been uh, around the world in England, Canada, the US, and I've been a lay reader and catechist, uh, ending up having been in Hong Kong and Singapore and having had a radio program and a call-in radio program in Hong Kong, on Hong Kong radio. Uh, come back to Australia has have been sought by uh, Bishop John Reed and appointed to a, an inner city parish called St Peter's Cook River, which was the first per parish south of Sydney, established in 1833 and the church was built in 1835. We inherited a, a dispirited, I must say, congregation 
uh, of under 20 and a church that was in very bad repair. We spent five years there. The church was totally repaired under a, a grant from the, um, the government. We uh, fixed up the graveyard, which was an early graveyard for the colony. And it is now a functioning church with a minister. We got it to the point where they could afford a minister and the congregation grew to about 100 twice a, twice a Sunday. We were very blessed and very fortunate. After that, um, we went to the country and I was in the Robertson Parish of New South Wales and finally was given charge of a sub-church called um, what was it? it was Burrowing. Burrowing. Right. <laughs> Don't get old, whatever you do. Mine stops. So in Burrowing we did the same. We uh, uh, restored the church and restored the congregation. So it's been a life of adventure, but what we're doing now is not about me and my remarkable wife, Rosemary, who will speak in a minute. It's about a saviour born of woman, fully human, who in the power of the Holy Spirit forgives, heals, feeds the hungry, raises the dead, stills the storm, is crucified, dead, buried, raised by God three days later, who is now seated at the right hand of God. It's about him. In this name, Jesus Christ, we will be ambassadors and seek to establish a family-focused, faith-based community to bring the good news of Jesus and make disciples. It will be a happy, impactful presence called the Estella Adventure. There's a Jewish writer called Isaac Singer. He encourages us to see our lives as daily episodes of a serial that begins with the book of Genesis. He says, God is the writer and we are both the heroes and the readers. Pray for us at the Estella Adventure. Good morning, everyone. Morning. Um, my road was a little bit different. Um, the Lord, I guess, intervened in my life in three different situations, and I'll try and make it short. First time was when I was six and my father died, and um, in those days, children weren't included in, in the dying process, and for me, I was very upset that I couldn't say goodbye to my father, so I said to my mother, where has my father gone? And he, she said, oh, he's with God in heaven. So I had a terrible time with school. So one day I thought, if I miss the bus and put one foot in front of the other, by the time I get there, it was a fair way, um, school would be over. And on that way, I had a conversation with God. So he was up there in heaven. That's what all I knew. Um, and so I said, God, if you would just give me one last chance to say goodbye to my father and give him a hug, then uh, that, that would help. Um, and so um, I knew that, that, I guess in my little heart, I knew that if, if I did see my father and I gave him a hug, I wouldn't let go. I'd want to go up there with him and I think God knew that. So what God did was, in my mind, he said, I will look after you. And it was a strong message. And so from then onwards, because my mother became the breadwinner and she was very busy, and I didn't want to bother her with my problems because I was terrified she'd die too. So God got all my little problems. And I would tell him that I didn't like church, uh, school, uh, sorry, yes, school, and when I didn't want that spelling test to happen. Sometimes it did, sometimes it didn't. So God looked after me. And then <clears throat> when I was about 15, um, we had a mission. And I remember sitting there, and the, it was a sort of fire and brimstone as it was in those days call to the Lord, and I thought, well, I know I'm a sinner, uh, my parents told me that, my teachers told me that, I'm a bit rebellious, and it was a long aisle to walk along, and I thought, I don't want to do that, uh, that was the call to go to the altar. And um, then the hymn, uh, Just as I am with wipe out one plea, but, but the, that thy, God, thy, lo oh, thy love was shed for me, and so I... Um, and suddenly the Holy Spirit in my eyes opened me to the wonderful love of God, that there was no condemnation in Jesus. And that's something I think we, we need to take hold of um, because we're very good at um, 
condemning ourselves. Um, and then after that, I, I went nursing, children's nursing. I had a difficult time with suffering and death of children. And my friends would say, well, where is your God now? Um, and so I sort of went away from the Lord. It was all a bit too much. Um, and then one day, my brother, who was a Christian, was saying, said grace. And suddenly I thought, wow, I'm not really in the right place spiritually. And someone said to me, well, what is love? And suddenly I thought, I know what love is. It's God's love and I'm not living it. So I um, changed my job, gave up my flat, found a church and was part of that and grew back into, um, <clears throat> into the fellowship. So fellowship with other Christians is very important, I think especially for young people. And so then um, some, a, a missionary couple came talking about mission and I felt the Lord calling me to that. Um, they said if we could give our time and our expertise overseas to other countries that are undeveloped, like not so much as ours, therefore what a difference we would make as Christians. So um, I went home, got out a map, said, Lord, where, where will I go? And um, I'd done an overland trip from India to London when I was a young person. And so then I, um, I had an Afghan brother-in-law. I'd loved Afghanistan. I'd had about five different refugees in my family, starting from my stepfather's mother who escaped from Russia, the, the uh, Russian Revolution, and I met her and she told me all about it. That was, I was about 10 when I had heard her story. So I had a great yearning to help people in other countries um, who, you know, had to escape because of war and political situations. And so um, the Lord led me to CMS um, and I went to a place called Banu up on the Afghan border. Uh, the Russians were in Afghanistan at that time and we had all these refugees coming across and um, we were looking after the women, uh, delivering their babies. Uh, we used to give praise when we had a normal delivery because all, a lot of the women had TB spines and terrible complications. Um, and so um, I became quite ill with a virus, a dysentery virus. I lost a lot of weight. I came home after two years. The specialist said, do you want to go back? I said, yes, I think I should. And he said, if you get this again, you've got to come home. And unfortunately, after six months, we were in the desert um, at a picnic with one of the doctors, and I had some water, and it all started again. Um, I survived another two years there. Then I realised that I probably was a liability to everyone. So I came home very quite despondent. And um, CMS were wonderful in the way they looked after me, and they said that there were places I could go, Egypt, other places, if if I wanted to go back, but I just felt I needed a year to heal <coughs> physically and emotionally and whatever else. Um, and so for some time I couldn't look at any violence on TV. Um, I guess I had a little bit of post-traumatic stress uh, from what I'd seen. And then um, someone asked if I would like to, I was a nurse, still a nurse, um, and someone asked if I would like to um, work uh, the um, hospice that the deaconesses had, had been finding it very hard to get a chaplain or, and none of the deaconesses wanted the position so I was asked would I be prepared to to start that up um, and run that um, and I just felt that was right and I think the most wonderful thing was because of all the problems I'd had in those four years on the mission field um, and came home feeling almost like a failure God more or less said to me, well, none of that was in vain because all the pain, all the agony I had when I was looking after uh, patients with, with cancer, it, I could relate very well to them and spiritually as well. And so um, I did that for 10 years. Uh, the hospital closed, so we had a very hard time with that. Um, and then I went into, um, I met a Catholic nun and she said, I'm desperate for someone um, other than a Catholic to look after the people in our aged care who weren't Catholic and so I went and worked there for some time and then I ended up back in Jeff's office doing the WHS. Um, and so that is my life.
stable. We are, we are very pleased to have Jeff and Rosemary among us who will be helping and, uh, and organising and leading us out there at uh, Estella. Um, we will um, try and uh, work on, on the various aspects of ministry in that, in that uh, region and of course you and I will be, and Rosemary will be uh, chatting about how we do that uh, with our parish council. With that in mind, let us just pray for Jeff and Rosemary today. Um, as they commence ministry among us, and we will commit them to the Lord this morning uh, for that very special work. Shall we just bow our heads as we pray? Heavenly Father, we commit uh, Jeff and Rosemary to you. We thank you that they have been called to this particular part of the world in Wagga. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that they that you have empowered them and you give them your strength to go about the ministry that they will have before them. Father, we pray that we all may have the vision for that ministry. We pray that we may be able to support them. And Heavenly Father, as they go forward, we pray that you may give them a real sense of your presence, give them comfort and peace and a real understanding that they are in the centre of your will. We commit them to you now in the name of the one who died and rose again and who will bring us all to your glory. And Father, we commit them to you in the name, in the special name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Go in peace. <clears throat> I think we should give them a good <laughs> start. Thank you very much. It's lovely to hear how God in our lives draws people to themselves and how God leads people on a path. Uh, and everyone here has a story about how God leads you on your path in life. We are all together here now because of the power of God's Spirit who is with us. And uh, we rejoice in that. Let's just bow our heads and we'll pray. Our Father, we commit ourselves to you today. We pray that your very special blessing may be upon us as we go our way. We thank you for our family here, our Christian family. And we pray that we may reach out um, in the town here, in the city, uh, in Estella and all over this great city of ours uh, with the good news of Jesus Christ our Lord. And so, Father, go with us as we leave this place today. In the name of Jesus. Amen.
Thank you for being with us today. Uh, a journey that we're on all together. Uh, it's great to have uh, Jeff and Rosemary with us as we talk about church planting uh, in the Estella area. It's going to be a great adventure for this church of ours. So please pray for us and thank you very much for being here.